weird and disturbing parasites. Number 10. Negleria fowleri Viewed through a microscope, this amoeba looks like an evil clown dreamed up by Stephen King on mescaline. It's something referred to as the brain-eating amoeba, which does nothing to enhance its lovability. It's found in freshwater rivers and lakes and infects swimmers by entering their nose and traveling to their brain. Although millions of people are exposed to the amoeba each year, only a few of them ever get sick. But those that do soon find themselves in serious trouble. Within days of exposure, they'll be suffering from fever, seizures, loss of balance, and hallucinations. By this stage, it's already too late for effective treatment, and death will typically follow. So never let anything into your nose. Ever. Number 9. Simothua exigua this nightmare-inducing parasite belongs to the same family as lobsters and crabs. Having found a suitable victim, most often a red snapper, the parasite makes itself at home in the fish's gills until it reaches maturity. This is bad news for the host, as the little beastie then makes its way to the snapper's mouth, where it bites into the tongue and drains it of blood. The tongue then withers and dies, leaving the parasite in its place. It doesn't make for a pretty sight, but the host fish doesn't seem to be too inconvenienced by the presence of their unwanted guest. The Simothoa exigua is unique in being the only organism known to replace an entire organ on their host. Thankfully, they're not harmful to humans outside of a weird horror movie about them, although they can bite if handled while alive. The fish they coexist with are eaten by humans, so every now and again they end up on someone's dinner plate. We wouldn't recommend eating them. Number 8. Cochlomia also known as the screw worm fly, this unpleasant character most often infects livestock and pets. However, they do infect humans from time to time, so there's always an outside chance that you'll be treated to a personal encounter. Their modus operandi is for an adult fly to lay its larvae in an open wound. The larvae hatches into maggots, which soon begin their business of chewing the host's flesh. Most species of maggots will only eat the dead flesh, which is why they can be useful in medicine. But the screw worm has no such scruples. It will chomp right through previously healthy flesh, causing horrible wounds. To make things even more terrifying, the maggots have toxic saliva that causes infections and produces foul-smelling pus. Left untreated, the host will sicken and often die. This is of no concern to the screw worm, which by this time will have grown into a rather sinister-looking adult fly and be off looking to perpetrate the gruesome cycle. Where's the horror movie about these monsters? Number 7. Toxoplasma gondii up to a third of the planet's human population may be infected by this single-celled parasite, although a healthy immune system is able to keep it in check, so most of those afflicted will have no serious issues. The outlook for an infected mouse isn't so hot. The parasite not only removes a rodent's natural fear of cats, but actually triggers a fatal attraction towards all things feline. Incredibly, it's able to alter the brain structure of its rodent host and compel it to all but serve itself up on a platter for the local neighborhood tom. This is bad news for the mouse, but great news for the parasite, which is only capable of reproducing in a cat's guts. There are actually several examples of parasites that are able to modify their host's behavior, although none of the others are looking to get laid in a cat's large intestine. Just be thankful that we don't have that extra step in our reproductive cycle. Number 6. Filarial Worms these tiny parasites are spread by mosquito bites and affect 120 million people in tropical and subtropical climates. These human-specific parasites are only able to survive in our lymph system, but while the majority of those infected will never develop clinical symptoms, a few aren't so fortunate. Although the worms are microscopic, they can do horrendous damage. Typical symptoms include horrific swelling of the limbs and testicles. The condition, often referred to as elephantitis, is painful, debilitating, and highly visible. Number 5. Megalomyrex simocticus Megalomyrex are a species of South American ants with a tough guy attitude. Considered a social parasite like your friend who keeps crashing on your couch and eating all your food, Megalomyrex infiltrate entire colonies rather than individuals. Their targets are a peaceful, fungus-farming species of ants called Cerecomex amabilis. The Megalomyrex are built for battle and usually have little difficulty in killing their way inside and taking over. The S. amabilis's queen's wings are clipped and she suffers the indignity of being forced to undertake the tasks of a common worker. Meanwhile, the Megalomyrex eat their host's food and live the high life, insofar as that's possible for ants, while their hosts do the bulk of the work. This all sounds like something of a raw deal for the host colony, however the presence of their ill-mannered guests does bring benefits. 
A third species of ant, the aggressive Namtogenes hartmanni, will attack and usurp colonies of the S. amabilis. The latter make for poor soldiers, with their battlefield tactics consisting mostly of running away or pretending to be dead. The Megalomyrex aren't such easy foes to subdue, and they fight back fiercely. The parasitic ants even have a chemical weapon in the form of a venom, which they can disperse in aerosol form. This confuses the attacker's ability to determine friends from foe, causing the invading army to lose cohesion and even attack each other. Even the presence of a few Megalomyrex can be enough to turn the tide of battle, so if they're going to be around, you might as well have them on your side. Number 4. Lower Lower Endemic in some parts of Africa, the lower lower gets into its human hosts through the bites of mango flies. The bite itself hurts as the fly rips through skin to get to the blood, but the parasite itself is even worse. The worm, which can grow up to 20 centimeters long, causes intense pain by wriggling around under the skin. Disturbingly, they can sometimes be seen migrating through the white portion of the eye, hence the nickname eye worm. Symptoms include itching, swelling, fatigue, joint pain, kidney disease, and retina damage. The worm can be removed through surgery, but the larvae may still remain in the blood. Number 3. Cuscuta like something out of the day of the Triffids, the Cuscuta, also known as the Dodder, is a parasitic plant that feeds on other plants. Having no chlorophyll, it cannot make its own food and relies entirely on its host for survival. The plant bears a striking resemblance to spaghetti, and once it sprouts from the ground, it begins to search around for a suitable host. If it fails to accomplish this within a few days, it will die, which is a pretty tough task to be assigned at birth. Assuming it's successful, the Dodder detaches itself from the ground and winds itself around the host's stem. Surviving by drawing nutrients from the host, the dodder is even capable of moving from plant to plant and letting them handle the bothersome business of photosynthesis. Number 2. Tania solium this tapeworm is a well-known parasite that typically makes itself at home in the intestines of humans and other mammals. What many people don't know about this is that it's also possible for the tapeworm larvae to invade our brains. A person can only get tapeworms through eating infected and undercooked meat. If this happens, the tapeworm will set up in the base of the intestines and get busy laying thousands of eggs, which are excreted in feces. Any eggs that find their way back into a pig will complete its life cycle and hatch into a tapeworm. Sometimes, particularly in the areas of the world with poor sanitation, the eggs will be consumed by a human. In this case, the parasite won't die, but neither will it be able to develop beyond its larval form. Typically, the larvae will become lodged in the brain, where it produces a chemical that prevents the body's immune system from detecting its presence. In the short term, this usually isn't disastrous, and an infected person might go for years without complications or even an inkling that their brain has been invaded. However, when the larvae finally die, they stop producing their stealth chemical. The body's defenses go on attack, and this causes the brain to swell. The result is devastating. Seizures, paralysis, loss of speech, and even death may follow. This particular form of parasite is disturbingly widespread, and the World Health Organization estimates that as many as 50 million people worldwide may be affected. Number 1. Hymneophemesis argyrophaga Plesiometa argya is a species of spider that can be found in Costa Rica, where it spends its days hanging out on its web, snacking on insects and doing other spider stuff. But one particular insect, a parasitic wasp, has the ability to turn the tables in a disturbing fashion. The wasp stings the spider and paralyzes it so she can then lay eggs on its abdomen. The spider soon recovers, but its troubles are only just beginning. The wasp larvae feed on the spider's blood as the unsuspecting host goes about its business. After a few weeks, the larvae need a cocoon in a nice safe place, and the spider is going to provide it. The larva injects a chemical into the spider, which alters its behavior in a very specific way. It begins to build a web unlike any it's built before, a small, heavily reinforced web that will hold the weight of a cocoon. With the work completed, the wasp larvae kills the spider, sucks out any remaining juicy bits, and settles into a cocoon in the center of its custom-built web. Soon, it will hatch, and the gruesome process begins all over again. Isn't nature beautiful? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button in the top right. Our channel has loads of other awesome videos just like this.